Welcome, welcome. Today, I'm going to be diving into the dirty truth about mindset work. Um, I'm Sarah Mack. I'm a mindset and messaging coach. And the last few days, I haven't been feeling very good. And I thought it would be a great opportunity to come and share my process in a little more detail with you. Um, and I think it's an important message to talk about that, you know, doing the mindset step mindset work, stepping more into the things that you really desire in your life. It's not always a pretty process. It can get pretty freaking ugly and it doesn't feel good um, a lot of the time. So when you're emotionally detoxifying, when you're letting go, um, when you're moving into, you know, bigger and better and more aligned ways of living, you have to purge those old ways of being, those old emotional patterns, old, you know, traumas and things that you've stored in your um, in your system that are not congruent with you moving forward. And the process of releasing them from your system can kick up a lot of um, unpleasant physical symptoms. So, you know, fatigue is a big one, brain fog, digestive disruption, um, you know, emotional, being on an emotional roller coaster, a lot of things coming up and, uh, you know, even fever, feeling like you're coming down with a flu or a cold. These are all symptoms that will happen when you dive into mindset work and you start to really commit to living in a different way and to start showing up differently, start taking action in a, dif in a different way and you know, really becoming available for new and better ways of being in all areas of your life. So I wanted to share a little bit about my process with that because um, I haven't been feeling that good for the last few days and part of me was thinking, you know, I've been traveling a lot. I just came all the way um, from New York up to Montreal to officially become my Canadian resident, which has been amazing and really exciting. Lots of travel, went camping along the way. You know, um, it's been a, an amazing time, but all of that travel and that intensity um, has obviously taken a toll. But not only that, you know, I've also been going through my own shifts on many levels other than just the physical one. So not been feeling amazing this week, but it's really important, you know, before I used to feel really ashamed, I used to really judge myself for not feeling well or for not feeling good, thinking I'd done something wrong, thinking I needed to hide away or that I wasn't good enough, that I wasn't perfect enough. And, you know, that those ways of um, judging myself would just make me feel 10 million times worse. So it's been a gradual learning process for me to, um, to not judge whatever's going on and recognize that I'm a human being. Sometimes I'll feel good, sometimes not so good. And obviously I have a whole plethora of tools that support me to, you know, continue to transform, continue to do the emotional purging work, to continue to allow new and more fulfilling ways of living into my, you know, my everyday existence and to navigate me through those moments where stuff is coming up for me to release, for me to look at. So it's really, you know, it's an important message that when you start to step into the things that you really want in your life, whether that's in relationships, in your career, in, you know, a next level of finances, um, that it, it is required for you to shift beliefs and emotional patterns and to release that and to do the dirty work and to go in there and look, well, what did I believe about myself? What have I been holding true? that has not been working for me, that has not been creating results that are really fulfilling for me. And that can be a really painful process. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that today. Um, and you know, some of the things that I engage in on a regular basis, ugly crying, <laughs> physical symptoms like pain, brain fog, um, fatigue, fever, stomach upsets, on a regular basis, thankfully not so much now as I did at the beginning of my journey of transformation. Um, I've also spent a lot of money um, working with practitioners and coaches to really hold space for me to feel safe to look at my pain and to examine some of the traumas that I've been through ever since I was a kid that created these beliefs that weren't serving me, that have enabled me to shift them because we have to face up to that. We have to face up to the truth of our insecurities, of the root of our feelings of being unworthy to have exactly what it is that we want in life. And that, you know, we run from that so hard and so fast that take all the help we can get to do that, to walk through that process, right? Because that is the key to having freedom. And 
it's really that having that strength and that support to encounter difficult emotions. We are, we live in a pretty emotionally illiterate society. We don't, you know, we hide emotions, we shame emotions, we make ourselves wrong for having the full spectrum of emotions. And that doesn't really support us when we're trying to transform as beings and um, become emotionally literate and, you know, step into new, more expansive ways of being, step into greater challenges to take on new things and be really creative and really fulfill, you know, create a really fulfilling life. It requires for us to be able to sit on the full emotional spectrum and know how to handle all of those human emotions that come with just being alive. So, um, and you know, sometimes that doesn't feel good. Sometimes we're not good at it. Sometimes we need to practice that and recognize that, you know, obviously coming from um, an English background, English people do not like to talk about emotions. They would much rather go down to the pub and drink a lot of alcohol and then allow the emotions to come out than actually sit and be able to process them and ex express them. And you know, I'm not, that's not just English people, but it's kind of a, of a higher intensity for people who have been brought up in that, um, that kind of environment. So, you know, me really giving myself permission to feel those harder emotions and to go through that process has just empowered me to fully, more fully take a stand for myself and to be able to, um, you know, really commit to my values, commit to my priorities in the big pile of previous rejections that I've experienced all throughout my life of being told I shouldn't do something that I care about or that something that is really exciting to me isn't a good idea or isn't possible for me or I'm not you know xyz enough to be able to create that so you know after really in ingesting all of these messages it's really important to really start to look at them and start to purge them one by one and recognize how they've been influencing our decision making and you know ultimately this fear of rejection and internaling that narrative just leads to self-rejection. It leads to you settling for things that don't actually make you happy. And um, Jeanette says, and she's a California married to an Englishman, so you understand what I'm talking about. She was judging herself hard last night for being so exhausted. Yeah, I feel you on that one. And I've been there as somebody who has, you know, recovered from chronic fatigue and a massive burnout. I, it could have been solved so much faster if I just stopped judging myself for being in that place. And, you know, the, the faster we're able to release self-judgment, the easier it is that we can just simply look to the problem, take different action and solve it without making it an even bigger and heavier burden than it needs to be. So once you start to un unwrap these um, emotional ties one by one, you know, that has really enabled me to open the playing field give myself permission to feel worthy and deserving and capable of actually creating specifically what it is that I desire in all areas of my life, in my relationships, in my career choice, in you know the places I spend time, in my creativity, in my expression, in my impact and influence in the communities that I care about. And that's really how you create happiness, right? Is by giving yourself permission to create the things that really fulfill you and that are in alignment with you. So, you know, when you really give yourself permission to do that work and to stop resisting being uncomfortable and looking at that pain, um, it really stops those, those pain and fear stories from controlling you and from controlling your decisions and from holding you back from moving forward in the direction that you know you really want to be moving in. But it does take work and it takes focus and it takes devotion, time and space and commitment. Um, to do that. So, but it, it always pays off, right? It always, always, always pays off and it's always worth it. Even if, if you know, it can feel like really inconvenient and really challenging and really uncomfortable in the moment, the payoff is always worth it because it feels so amazing when you actually get what you really desire and you release those feelings of inner resistance. So, um, it's really about looking inside, being lovingly and patiently accepting of what you find and having the courage to face up to your truth. Um, and that's when you unlock the real fun, you know, even in the mess, even in the pain, even in the discomfort and the revelations that can completely shift the way that you see yourself, your relationships and your worldview. It's still really fun and interesting and enjoyable, right? Humans are so interesting. We are so interesting and our path is so unpredictable and surprising and magical and when you really allow yourself to feel it on on the full spectrum 
it's not boring. So even though it can feel challenging, it's going to be a it's going to be a very interesting ride, and you'll glean so many lessons the more you really give yourself permission to dive into that type of work. And you know, as you move forward and you take action, whatever it is that needs to come up for you, whatever it is you need to work on to have awareness on and to release and to move through and to really harvest the lessons from, that's going to rise up to the surface in order for you to do that. So, you know, expect to be triggered, expect to be really freaking uncomfortable, expect to feel afraid and feel uncertain and feel like the rug has been pulled out from underneath your feet because that's you really jumping in with two feet first and jumping into the unknown and creating something that you've never experienced before, which is exactly what you desire. If you're not satisfied the way, with the way that things are in whatever area of your life, it requires that you step into the unknown because that is where the difference lies. That's where you create that completely different life that will um, be fulfilling for you. So um, let me know your top takeaways from this. I hope this has resonated with you and brought value to you. And if you are um, feeling like you're ready for another level of support in your business with your mindset and to really get rid of those stories of unworthiness, get really focused and specific on what it is that you desire to create and to have the support with that and really start showing up in a bigger way to start creating those results now and not later, please do send me a message. I've got three spots available this month for my one-on-one -on -one coaching program, Content Queen. So I would love to um, talk to you more about that if this story is resonating with you. And yeah, Jenna says self-judgment is such an energy sink. It really is. So don't do it. Please, please just decide now in this moment. Self-judgment is not something that we're interested in. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon. Bye.